danger to you and your family and the simple preventive steps authorities are not telling you about. The deadly parasite carried by cats called Toxo is one of the leading causes of blindness in the world. But tonight you'll also learn of the research linking it to schizophrenia, promiscuity, even road rage. Here's Alex Cullen. It's ingenious, you know. Nothing else can live in so many different organisms and survive. No drug for this existence. The ultimate survival is the locust of parasite. The hardest people say goodbye to her. I could lose the vision of both of my eyes, and that's scary. This thing exists. It's out there. It's we're surrounded by it. Two and a half billion people worldwide. Eight million Australians. Quite an amazing little beast. The little beast has a long name. Toxoplasma gondii. Toxo for short. It's spread by cats. Passed onto us. The consequences on the unborn, the young and the weak can be devastating. I no longer had a happy, healthy, beautiful baby. I had a very sick baby. So nothing can kill it? No. Toxo is the perfect predator. Predominantly it goes to your muscle and your brain and eyes quite often as well. So anywhere basically that it can sit and evade the immune system. Dr. Nikki Bolter has a cat called Sox and has spent her career studying Toxo. It's unique among deadly parasites because it has the ability to infect every warm-blooded animal on Earth. It makes it the ultimate parasite, if you like, to be able to infect any, any warm-blooded living creature. But here's the extraordinary thing. It can only breed inside one animal. It lays eggs inside the gut of a cat. When they are excreted in droppings, they can survive in soil or sand for up to a year and a half. And then when somebody comes along, either a human or any other animal, touches that soil or the sand, then you'll have eggs on your hand, you'll scratch your nose or, you know, clean your fingernails, and you'll then become infected. Infection takes between three and ten seconds. Toxo spreads through the bloodstream, taking refuge in eyes, muscles and brain tissue, building cysts to thwart the body's defences. They encase themselves in this cyst wall, which is impervious to any you know, immune attack. To have something sitting in a little cyst in your brain, it's kind of freaky. It's like uh, something out of X-Files, you know, you expect it to burst out and freak any moment now. In healthy adults, symptoms often present as flu or a lack of energy. But Toxo becomes really dangerous in pregnant women where it's passed by a mother to unborn child. I knew about toxoplasmosis, you know, very briefly about not um, changing cat litter. Fleur and Steve Ristick from Perth have a beautiful daughter, Indigo. They were expecting their second child when Three months ago, Fleur discovered she and her unborn baby had been infected. Can you even think when or how you would have? I go back on everything. I go back to, you know, playing with indigo, you know, in the sand and, you know. Which is almost a daily occurrence. Yeah. You know, we're always in parks with sand pits and she's always fussy him around. I mean, I was largely oblivious. I mean, I had no idea that toxoplasmosis existed and, and the sort of precautions that we ought to be taking to avoid it and certainly that there was um, any possibility for, for us to be tested for it because it's just not routinely done in Australia. In France and other parts of the world, pregnant women are routinely tested for toxo and so are sand pits where children play. Fleur was not tested, so at first thought her second pregnancy was fine. About... Uh, 18 weeks, started feeling her move and, and kick and, you know, a few weeks later, Steve said you could feel her kicking, you know, from my stump. You know, it was really, connect, you know, that, it was really starting to connect. Her 20-week ultrasound was fine, but sometime in the next two weeks, Fleur and her unborn baby caught Toxo. Because Fleur didn't know, because there are no routine tests, she wasn't given the drugs 
that could have protected her daughter. Her little girl was delivered stillborn. Fleur was able to hold her and give her a name, Harmony. To be honest, the hardest bit was saying goodbye to her for the, for the last time. That was, you know, knowing that she wasn't with me anymore once we left the hospital. We left without her face. Of course, it was always in the back of my mind of, you know, there's, there's what if, what if I'd, I had a blood test at that 20 week ultrasound, and, you know, and I, that's probably around the time when I, when I caught it. So about this? <laughs> Bella Ganko is living proof of the importance of timely diagnosis. 17 years ago, her mum, Rhonda, caught Toxo. She most likely got it at a Christmas party in the 27th week of her pregnancy. It was basically a cocktail party, so hors d'oeuvres were served. Among the hors d'oeuvres, a slice of kangaroo carpaccio. Uncooked meat is prime real estate for the parasite. The kangaroo would have been infected by Toxo in cat droppings. That one bite of food potentially will affect my child for the rest of her life. She did smile initially, um, but she stopped smiling. And um, at some point I went and looked in my baby development book and somewhere in there discovered that blind babies do smile initially, but then stop because they don't see it. Rhonda took her to her doctor for an examination. He handed the baby back to me and said, yes, you're right, Rhonda, she can't see. And... Um, and I think she has a condition called toxoplasmosis, and have you ever heard of that before? Toxo is a leading cause of blindness worldwide. But Bella's parents and doctor took quick action. Twelve months of intensive treatments with antibiotics halted the attack. Just go and have a look in the back of their eyes now, Bella. Bella's sight returned to her right eye. The left is permanently scarred. The parasites are still in her eye and could break out again. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I could lose both the vision of both of my eyes and that's scary. Not knowing is scary. What's also frightening is what's now emerging about how Toxo might be affecting our minds and influencing our behaviour. It was the discovery that infected rats curiously became attracted to cats that sparked scientific interest. They actually become attracted to cats, the smell of cats. And it's believed that the, it's the parasite affecting the behaviour of the rat in this manner to try and um, take it back to the cat, be eaten, and therefore um, finish its life cycle, complete its life cycle. The change in behaviour in rats led scientists to ask, could Toxo also change us. Here in the heart of Prague is one of Europe's oldest universities, Charles University, more than 650 years old. And it's here for the last 20 years, one man's life has been consumed by toxoplasmosis. Biology professor Yaroslav Flager is an eccentric character. So, Professor Albert Einstein, you studied here. Yes, just here in, in this building. But he's recognised as a world authority on Toxo. He studies over 22 years on more than 13,000 people reveal unusual behaviour among those with Toxo. Toxoplasmosis can make women promiscuous. Yes. <laughs> Men with toxoplasmosis are more than two times more likely to have a car accident. Yes. Men with toxoplasmosis are more likely to have a lower IQ. More likely. Women with toxoplasmosis spend more money on clothes. Yes. <laughs> Very quick there. <laughs> Men with toxoplasmosis are more likely to be suspicious and jealous. Yes. Professor Flager theorises that while Toxo often lies dormant, when it breaks out, it can interfere with those parts of the brain 
that control how we behave. You're convinced a lot of psychiatric diseases are caused by parasites? Yes, yes, I think so. While not all academics agree, one of his findings is getting plenty of support. The link between cats, toxo and schizophrenia. Evidence dates back to the 1890s when a rise in the popularity of cat shows coincided with a surge in schizophrenia cases. Professor Flager is convinced. A very large fraction of schizophrenia is triggered, is caused by toxoplasma infection. People born in cities where there's generally a greater number of cats uh, have a higher incidence of schizophrenia. Um, people that have had cats during their childhood there's, there's a link that people have high levels of schizophrenia there. Also, places where there are very few cats, such as uh, the highlands of Papua New Guinea, there's virtually no toxoplasmosis and virtually no schizophrenia. There's no doubt that cats are behind the spread of toxo. But no one's suggesting for a minute that cats should carry the blame. There's always the paranoia about cats and cleaning up the litter tray, but I think very few people actually know about the fact you can catch it from meat, so eating undercooked meat, um, gardening and not wearing gloves or not washing your hands thoroughly. I think it's, it's, the knowledge on that is very poor. It's a simple test. It's a simple blood test. Yeah. And so uh, it, it is extraordinary to believe that it's not at least uh, made available or the option given to people to say that, look, this thing does exist and that um, you can be tested for it. I want to try and get out there so it doesn't happen to other people. You don't want other people to go through what... No, it's been hell on earth. <sighs> do you want everyone to know? Do you want the message to get out there? To stop this happening again? Yeah. How important is that to you? Think? So important. I mean, if they just knew what caused it and, what, how, and how to prevent it, it could stop other people getting the same thing as me. Just a little information that could help save so many people. Alex Cullen there with that report, and there's more information on our website. Next, a red nose, old blue eyes, and 2.6 billion reasons to watch. That's how much money Jerry Lewis has raised for children, and that's just the start of his extraordinary story. We haven't even mentioned Marilyn Munro.